Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Jaspreet Kaur and I am a nutritional coach. And if you've been here before, if you've seen my videos before, then you'll probably notice two new things. First off, my YouTube channel name has changed, which is pretty exciting. And I'll be doing a separate video discussing all of that stuff next week. So stay tuned for that. And second, we are in a bit of a different location for the filming. So this is my office. This is why I do all of my work all my studying and all of that kind of stuff and I thought this would be a good place to do this video because we're going to be discussing how to navigate higher education as a woman of colour when you're trying to look after your health and well-being because boy it can be tough. We face a lot of different hurdles and difficulties and seeing as exam season is coming up, I decided to link up with Dr. Amina Yonis, who has a PhD in cell development and biology. And she is gonna be answering some questions that you lovely people sent in all about health and well-being while studying. So I hope you enjoy. I am here on YouTube, uh, kind of education-based, uh, sort of talking about how to get into university, what to expect. I just finished a PhD, so you know, talking about postgraduate. I'm just going to drop that uh, casually. She just finished a PhD, <laughs> people. <laughs> um, so yeah, just talking about education, how to get into it, and how to like navigate it. I guess as a as a like woman of colour, mm -hmm. um, as someone that wears a headscarf, as someone that is a bit different than like your typical like scientist that you probably yeah. Like, yeah, like I think if you Google scientist, <laughs> you so, get like, one I'm, kind of person. You get one kind of person. <laughs> so I'm reading a book about this actually oh, really? at the moment. Yeah, called Google, uh, a Logarithms of Racism, a Logarithms ah. of Oppression, um, okay, and cool. it's just about how Google can create some racist. Um, uh, yes search yeah, results, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, so you yeah. type in scientist or entrepreneur yeah. and it comes up with a white Certain, man. Yeah, look. Straight up, just a white yeah, man. Yeah. That's what it is. So I asked you lovely people, um, I did a call out and I asked you to ask some questions mm -hmm. to Amina because she is gonna be the person who's most qualified to answer these questions. Um, I wanted to start off by just telling you about my experience okay. at university because it, it was a bit of a weird one. So like, you know, I think for me, like as a first generation uh, migrant here, mm -hmm. like my parents are from Punjab. So like, yeah. um, I'm first generation and I went to university. I moved out of my yeah. home at like the age of 18, mm -hmm. which to me, I think is pretty young. Yeah. Um, I didn't know yeah. what I wanted to study. I just picked it because that was like the next step <laughs> in, you know, after college, I did yeah. my A-levels. The next step was, okay, just right now you, yeah. you go do yeah. a degree. And I'm like, all right, cool. So yeah. I picked a degree that like, I don't even know if I wanted to do it, but whatever, I did it. And the whole university culture was very really different for me because, you know, Punjabi home versus like British yeah. university, university culture, like yeah. hella different. different. So I got into like some really weird situations throughout my uni life. Um, I was there for, for four years, did like a placement and stuff like that. I got out of it and I got a good grade. Mm -hmm. I got the grade that I wanted to get, but it was tough. Like it was really tough for me. And right now I'm at a point where I want to go back mm. into higher education, yeah. but I'm just like, how yeah. would I navigate this yeah. stuff? Um, how would I navigate the structural racism that I'm now a bit more open to seeing? Yeah. How would I navigate the fact that yeah. I don't necessarily learn in the same way that people, yeah. that like universities want me to learn in, you know, when they're marking your, your uh, exams or like your coursework, how do I answer those questions? Because I don't think that I ever had that good communication yeah. with my lecturers and stuff where we both understood each mm -hmm. other. So I'm going to ask Amina some of the questions that you guys sent in. So the first one is from someone called Duha and they said, how do I prevent tiredness without drinking too much coffee in exam season? Because I'll be falling asleep before mm -hmm. I can get anything done. Okay, so I talk a lot about this and like trying to stay awake and I think there's two main methods that I would say that you can use. First is to actually change the technique that you're using to revise because I'm guessing that you probably sit down, textbook, highlighting, yeah. just writing notes and that's boring. Like that's so boring. So there's ways that you can study that are, that's called active recall. Like if you have made your flashcards already, just like try to learn them, like cover, cover them up, ask yourself a question and look back at it. That's like quick kind of ways of checking. Yeah. Um, other ways are like making mind maps. So let's say you want to learn about, I don't know, photosynthesis for example. Mm -hmm. Just like have a sheet of paper, write photosynthesis and write everything you know about it. Mm -hmm. And then go to the book and check to see that you've like written everything. Yeah. That's another really like interactive way. Exam papers are another way, like really quick ways of like just seeing a question, mm -hmm. the three mark question, 
few minutes, few marks, get that done, check if you're right, you know if you're right or wrong, move on to the next question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Honestly, like especially at this point in the year, like in April, you should yeah. not be highlighting all this crap, like it's, no. Like it's it just shouldn't be, it's time. a waste of time. And then a second uh, thing that you could be doing is also breathing exercises. Okay. So I'm not sure if you heard of Wim Hof. Yes, the I've Ice Man. Of, the, the Ice Man. Yeah. <laughs> My husband's obsessed with him. And um, so like that kind of exercise is really, really, really good if, mm -hmm. if you're if you're revising and you just need that like burst of energy. Mm -hmm. Um so it's when you kind of like breathe in and out really quickly and so you're hyper oxygenating yourself mm -hmm. and you're also like starving yourself of oxygen when you like hold your breath in between. Mm -hmm. And so what that does is it really like brings it, it makes you firstly it makes you deep breathely. It breathe deep breathe. <laughs> it makes you breathe deeply. So you're actually breathing from your nose to your your stomach because okay. we don't do that yeah we don't breathe we breathe from here to like here yeah we don't breathe as we should breathe uh -huh. what that does is it kind of makes you like more anxious more nervous and you're you're not fully like circulating your oxygen mm -hmm. so by just taking two three minutes to just do those deep breaths mm -hmm. it's been proven to like reduce stress anxiety any kind of feelings that you might be feeling in terms of like just just kind of be feeling overwhelmed mm -hmm. and I feel overwhelmed a lot sometimes even now when I'm like I've got so much to do yeah. um, and if I just sit down and like take some breaths it really does help yeah, so instead of having coffee just making it a bit more fun yeah. so you're not like this yeah. is boring also water is a yeah really I mean water is great I yeah instead of like having um, coffee fill yourself up with water or even have like a little snack next to you like nuts or I don't know fruit something that you can like keep on going to yeah so you feel that snacking like nature that mm -hmm, keeps you mm -hmm. awake but you're not binging on like stuff yeah. that you shouldn't really be all right next question is from Grace uh, Grace asked two questions so okay. the first one is most of the time when I'm stressed out I do not get enough sleep due to school I start to get sick so how do I prevent that so sleepless nights due to stress from school. That's mm. horrible. Yeah. That's so, so horrible. So and I remember I used to get that. If, if it's like a real issue, obviously go to your GP and like get it checked out. Yeah. But it could be other, other stuff as well. But if you know for sure it's only during exam season, which can happen, like obviously you're thinking a lot and mm. you're really nervous. I was just trying to find an outlet for that energy um, to make yourself really tired by the time you get like get into bed mm. so one way that I recommend is like finding a sport that you enjoy um, and it could doesn't have to be going to the gym you don't have to like pay you know loads of money to mm. get to the gym just go to a park go for a jog or just like do some burpees or like even something. at home on YouTube just watch something and get your blood pumping because yeah. what that would do is it releases like dopamine it releases like you know good hormones and endorphins and whatnot and it makes you kind of feel better yeah um, and then at the same time you will kind of tire yourself out as well mm -hmm. so not only are you sort of forgetting about your exams and yeah. you get that stress but you're also feeling better your body will feel better mm -hmm. and as a result when you get into bed and you you know your you, your head hits that pillow you're ready you out like a you're light. ready to go <laughs> yeah no it really does help i went to a, a talk the other day about um was a clinical psychologist and she was like on an average day we have like 80,000 thoughts that mm -hmm, go through our mm -hmm. head like on an average day and a lot of them are quite negative about ourselves like this is what I look like this is what I'm not doing this is what I should be doing and she was like imagine if you were speaking to your friend like that is that, yeah. a, is that someone that you would think was a good person no mm -hmm. you wouldn't be so don't talk to yourself like that try to dissociate yourself from feeling stressed and I know that's yeah. hard to say and hard to do but <clears throat> yeah try to think of an outlet where you can let your energy yeah. out I think that's really good so like the other day <clears throat> excuse me I put out a call out on my Instagram and I was like I want to work out what should I do and a lot oh, yeah. of people mentioned fitness blender <laughs> mm. that's actually a really good YouTube channel and I yeah. think I'm going to try and keeping up yeah. with that I'm not an exercise person but like once a week I'm going to try and do Girl, that you look fit so you're fine it's that, it's that plant based life. Uh, but I, I'm getting closer to 30 yeah. now so I've got to fix up I've got to start exercising um, another thing is that with regards to the thoughts mm. so I've put a limit on my Instagram okay. to 45 minutes a day how do you do that? You just you just put like a little alarm, like it puts a little alarm up on on the Instagram oh. app. You can put like a um, a timer. Really? Yeah, you can set it to whatever time you want. But mine Did is forty five minutes. Okay. And once I see mm. that, I'm just like, don't get too. I still go on Instagram yeah. after that, but I, I have in my mind I've been in it for forty five minutes. Right. I know that when I haven't been on Instagram. Um, for that long in the day, yeah. my thoughts are a bit more clear and I get more work done. I also, I, I don't use a chair when I work. Yeah. I use like <laughs> that gym ball instead of like using it as extra exercise. Yeah. Uh, I just sit on that and it okay. keeps me like, 
dynamic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what not, a word. And not like static and just like yeah. Because I find that like, you can get back problems after sitting on that like, for a while. By sitting on that ball, you're kind of like moving around. So Grace's second question is a really good one. I think this will resonate with a lot of people. It resonates with me, and I'm not even doing exams. Okay. But how do you balance your life during exam season? And I think this kind of applies to people who have like busy like. Yeah. I'm I'm a freelancer, so like I'll have periods of like busy, busy, yeah. busy, go, go, go. So it's like during those times, how do you personally like you've done a PhD, mm. you've done like you know you've been in further education. Yeah. How did you do that? I think I got better at this over time. I think in yeah. my undergrad, it was all or nothing. Like when I had exams, I had to be fully in exams. There yeah. was no like alternative. Mm -hmm. But I think I realized that's not healthy. Yeah. And it actually doesn't need, you know, I didn't get 100%. So clearly, you know, it it's, not, it's not like it, it makes you any better or any more clever or anything yeah. like that. So give yourself that time. So what I think when I did during my PhD was a much more healthier balance. Mm -hmm. So what I used to do was have like my priorities set. So I knew that today I'm going to finish writing this section or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then in the evening, I'm going to go out with my friends. Okay. So I had that treat that I knew I was going to get. And it also gives you that time limit yeah. of, oh, I've got to start I've got, getting ready, exactly, like I've got exactly. to go. Whereas if you've got nothing planned in the evening, I find 100%. that I'll just work up until 2 a.m. Yeah. and yeah. be like, yeah, it's fine. Like, and I'm it's the same amount of work that you could have done yeah. in by Because you know, I'll stop, I'll start eating yeah. a packet of crisps, I'll go to my phone, I'll do all of <laughs> yeah. this nonsense. It's true. Whereas I could have just had that yeah. cut off point of 5 p.m., gone on, yeah. gone out and had a good time yeah. on my phone. I, the more we yeah. have to do, the more productive we are because you have like a... A you just prioritize a bit more. Yeah. Like when I when I ha go to work, I come back home at five. I can still you know make a video. I can still edit. I can still do this and that. But on my days when I'm, when I'm off, I still do the same amount of things. I get yeah. done in two hours and in it's the like evening. How? It's just because I have to do it, right? Yeah. So you fit it in. When you don't, you're like, la la la, you procrastinate, yeah. you do watch YouTube, you do this and that. So yeah, I would say to kind of have a treat, either at the end of the week, because yeah. obviously you can't go out every single evening, yeah. right? I, don't, I wouldn't recommend that either. So at the end of the week, say to yourself, you know what, I'm going to treat myself. Be it by yourself, going, doing something at home, just having a day off, mm -hmm. just whatever it is. It doesn't have to be like, you know, going out or spending any money. It can be anything. Mm -hmm. But just having that treat that you say to yourself, at the end of the week, I'm going to do this for myself. Yeah. And then just time getting off. that done to be able to, to yeah. get to that point. So schedule some time off, Grace. Yeah. That is what is going to help yes. you. So the rest of these questions were sent in anonymously, so I'm not going to put up the names of them. The first one is, it would be great to talk about the culture of busy i.e. people mm. showing off with a lack of self-care. That's an interesting it one. It is. What do you think about that? I see it a lot, especially now being um, someone who like is kind of an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. then also has like a job. So kind of, I mean, I mean like in terms of like a nine to five job. Yeah. So I see it on both, both sides. So obviously at work in the office, you see people like always busy, always get, you know, trying to do things, but at the same time wasting a lot of time just chatting. And then on the flip side, you see entrepreneurs posting pictures of their laptops um, at you know two a.m. when you know in reality they're probably not working; they're just in front of it. So mm -hmm. it's really like a, a flip. I don't know. I don't. I feel like personally, I would just say like, don't show what you're doing all the time. Yeah. Just like do what you have to do. Have oh your priorities. Have a to-do list and just do it and just For real. do it in silence. You know, you don't have to always show people that I'm busy and I'm getting things done and this and that. When in reality, like that's probably your least productive day. Like um, a happy life is a private life, I really yeah. think so. Like going more like for the past couple of years, like really diving into this whole entrepreneur thing. Like I've done a lot of brilliant things that the internet don't know. Yeah. About. And it's, sure. that's cool. Like I don't think, you know, you see people like um, Gary V mm. and um, who is it? Someone Lopez, I'm not sure what his first name, Ty Lopez. They're like big internet entrepreneurs yeah. in it. And they're constantly, constantly yeah. pumping out content about how much they're working, how, how much they're getting yeah. done, what they're getting done, the money they're making, blah, blah, blah. But it's like in reality, a lot of entrepreneurs aren't actually like, no, just normal people yeah. getting a regular yeah. salary, yeah. working a regular job, but just on their own time. Yeah. The culture of being busy is just that it's 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 seen as if you're not being busy you're not you know being productive yeah. you're, you're gonna be like your value your is value diminished. is lower you're gonna work a nine to five forever you're yeah. gonna you know what i mean like there's there's that kind of backlash but at the same time don't believe what everyone puts out there yeah don't believe the hype so the next question is from a woman who has endometriosis okay. um, and she's also a mother okay so there's a lot a lot going on yeah. here so she said how do i balance being a mother a main caretaker at home okay. and a PhD student with endometriosis. And the reason I thought okay. this one would be interesting to ask to you mm -hmm. is because you are a, a woman mm -hmm. who did study a PhD yeah. 
Um, so there's some crossovers yeah. in that question. So what what would you say to this okay. person? I would say try to be really open with your supervisor and explain um, because you know people want you to be successful. Your supervisor mm. clearly likes you, which is why he employed you and so why he has you in the lab um, or wherever wherever you are. Mm -hmm. um, so try to explain and try to be uh, vocal about the your situation. Yeah, you don't have to you know be too. Uh, descriptive or you don't need to explain go to detail. everything yeah. but you can explain like look I've got some health issues I've got family issues would it be okay to maybe take some time off that's completely fine as well maybe mm -hmm. to sort, of sort stuff out or is it okay to work flexibly so maybe do like three days a week yeah. instead of like five days a week um, and for example my supervisor was really really um, understanding in that sense I didn't have to I didn't have any issues but there were people in the lab who did and he was really cool with it. I really don't know your details in terms of your project and what you're doing and that, that can make a big difference. But I would say just don't don't suffer in silence. If you really feel like the PhD is taking a toll on you, just take a break. Like it's not gonna go anywhere. Your mental and physical well being is more yeah. important than, um, than yeah, that. Have, have that balance, I would say, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for no, sure. Really. The next one is how do you get back into studying after a burnout from studying? One, take a break. So if that's a day, take a day. If that's two days, take two days. That's fine. It's better than you know taking not taking time off yeah. and then suffering for the next month. Secondly, sit down and reflect. Why was it that you burnt out? Is it because you weren't sleeping enough? Is it because you had you were just trying to go flat out for seven hours because that's just not productive? Mm. Is it what what is the reason why you burnt out? Reflect upon that and then say to yourself, all right, what am I gonna do differently? Because if I did the same thing again, I'm gonna burn out again. Mm -hmm. So let me do half an hour study sessions and then 10 minute breaks. So that way I'm kind of staggering my, you know, my my revision. Or say to yourself, all right, well, clearly, I don't know, working in, at home with my mum shouting, my brother is not working out for me, mm -hmm. go to the library. Like, you know what I mean? There's always a solution and think about what the issue is with your space. Yeah. Is your space, I can't work in a messy space. Yeah. Like, I can't work if there's books piled everywhere, I can't do it. Is that the issue? Is it because you've got a messy environment which is messing up with your brain and your That's space? so interesting. I've yeah. never heard that angle of it of literally just sit reflect, yeah. analyse and take some action to make that situation yeah. better. Because if you do the same thing again, you're going to burn out again. Yeah, for real. <laughs> What's going to happen? And the thing is, this is the thing, like with me, when I was yeah. doing my uh, dissertation, yeah. I literally just used to do the same thing. Like, Alright, I got the grade that I wanted, yeah. but it's not. I was miserable, yeah, exactly. for God's sake. Exactly. I hear loads of students like, like, I hate sure. university. I'm like, you should that hate it. it. I hate it. You should, <laughs> you should hate it. It's, it's not, it's something, I'm not, not blaming you as a student. It's just the, the I think, just the, idea, the, the, the culture. culture, I think, is how it is. 100%. It shouldn't be something somewhere that you hate. It should be an enjoyable experience. Yeah. Especially you're paying for it, man. You should have to. Yeah, man. <laughs> <that. laughs> I love that. That was, that was yeah. the best. Thank you so much yeah, for that. Okay. Um, so the last question, I've saved the best till last. This is literally my favorite question. I think this is great. Um, so this woman has asked for myself, she wants to know tangible ways to decolonize self from the Western education system. So like the grading system and exams. I'm like straight up, like I said before, I really struggled in school mm. because I just, I just couldn't work at that mm. pace. I couldn't read and digest all of this yeah. information. I didn't know how to do that in yeah. such a fast way. So how, yeah, it's a big question. It's, it's, it's huge, it's a whole video. Yeah. I, I feel like, so at, you know, currently in the education system, there's one fits all. Yeah. So you have to be someone who's academic, you have to be someone who, you know, it kind of complies with being in sets, like, you know, top set, bottom set, oh God, middle and set. Like so your value you is know, so obviously printed on, on you. Yeah, because of what set you're in or group you're what in grade or whatever you've grade got. you've got. And yeah. the grade that you get in your SATs in year six determines, determines what you should get in your so GCSE. Much. It, like there's all of that and and I think there's not really a way out of, of that system at the moment you, you kind of have to go with it or yeah. you do it at school yeah this is I think it's like it's going with it and then figuring kind of out how, day by day yeah. how to not put so much pressure on yourself and yeah. not stick a value like it's the yeah. same like in a job you don't attach your value to your no. job some people do but same with your degree and yeah. your exams and your results don't attach your entire value yeah. to that yeah. piece of paper I think what you need to do is um, don't take what the teachers say uh, as 
kind of gold as standard yeah. if they tell you oh you're never going to be able to get a six or seven or eight whatever grade you want don't think oh i'm never going to be able to do that because mm. you can have your own motivation i know it's so hard especially if someone's it's telling you so you can't do it it is difficult i'm not going to sit here and say it's yeah. easy but you know it, it can I think, be like done. you said you took t it took yeah. you time to get into this mode of like being able to balance. successfully yeah. balance things yeah. so i think it's going to take time yeah. another thing is just like be kind to yourself yeah like be kind in like the mistakes that you make in like the grades that you don't get yeah um because you know we're not always going to be perfect and sometimes mm. we will be let down by the system because the system's flawed mm. and it's not because you're flawed or because you're no. dumb or because you don't have the knowledge it's because the system's flawed like yeah. for me i remember in when i was getting my predicted grades for my gcse's and i was applying to like the best sick forms mm. in the country i was like yes i'm gonna go to the best run <laughs> um my english teacher predicted me a c oh. and i was like i'm gonna get an a star yeah. like how how dare you like yeah. and i said i spoke to him so much like and I look back now and I'm like, okay, it was blatantly because he was racist because all of my um, mock papers, mm. I got A's and A stars. So it's like, where was he getting that from? Mm. For two years, year 10 and year That's 11, harsh. I was getting A's and A stars. That meant that I had to go to a college which wasn't so what? great. Yeah, like I didn't get into a sixth form, so that meant I didn't go to a college. Mm. So I had to work even harder to get the grades I wanted at A level. I beat myself up for years that I wasn't good enough, that like I couldn't prove myself to this person. The people on the other side of that paper are humans as well and they're mm. flawed. The system yeah. is also flawed. So don't be hard on yourself. Like, think of the greater picture when, especially if you're studying and you're in your year 11, year 10 or even A levels, the grades that you get, don't dictate your life. Yes. Like we're both, you know, much older than you know GCSE levels. I'm not gonna say how old you are. Yeah. <laughs> Do your best, work your hardest, so you don't have any regrets. Yeah. But then don't make it, you know, be all and be all and end all. Really not. Once it's, it's done, you'll forget that it even happened like yeah. on a level. But thank yeah. you so much, Mina. That yeah. was really, really helpful. I enjoyed that. I'm sure a lot of people will take away some really good things. I learned a lot, yeah. and I'm gonna reconsider my uh, going back into you further should. education thing. You really I think should. I will. We did a video on Amina's channel yes. as well. So be sure to check that out. It's about how to implement plant-based and healthy habits yeah. into your routine uh, during Ramadan. So if you are going to be fasting for Ramadan, feel free to check that out. I'll leave that in the description box down below. Okay. Make sure you subscribe to her channel because she's fantastic. <laughs> and if you need any help, if you're a person of colour, a woman of colour, or anyone who is struggling with getting into higher education, yeah. drop her an email. Sure. It'll be in the description box yes. below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Bye.